Hello everybody, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming bringing you another video. Join all the videos and content we produce. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, click on that like button, and don't be afraid to share. Don't forget to click on the notification button, customize it however you want, but that way you're notified whenever we publish another video. Hello everyone, welcome to another Diablo 3 video. Today we are looking at the Demon Hunter, but this is specifically for a bounty farm build. So for those that are unfamiliar with it, let's just take a look at the set that we're going to use. So we're going to be using the Gears of Dreadlands. So the reason that we want this is, as you so the two piece is, we're going to gain four seconds of momentum when attacking with a primary skill to a max of 20 seconds. And then the four piece, when we're strafing, enemies we get a um sorry we get 60 percent damage reduction while strafing and for five seconds after but we also get eight percent increased movement speed for each second of momentum and then lastly our six pieces our primary skills deal fifteen thousand percent increased damage so the reason we want this is because bounties are all about speed as you can see i'm up to 20 stacks and then when i start strafing you're just incredibly quick and then we have other movement built into it to make us just a speed machine so that's the premise of the build. So without further ado, let's take a look at the items in detail. For the items that we need, so it is pretty similar to the Gears of Dreadlands actual build. So we have a video link to that in the description as well. So the main difference, or I guess I'll just re-highlight everything here quickly. So we have the six pieces. This does not require the Ring of Royal Grandeur. So we're going to be wearing the helm, shoulders, chest, gloves, boot, pants, and boots. And then our complementary pieces are we're going to use the squirts because we're basically on T16 farm where we're going to pretty much be one shot and everything. So we're going to use the squirts for the increased damage. We're going to be using the wraps of clarity. Um, so our hatred generators reduce our damage taken. Just a little bit of survivability as we're flying through. If you're in group bounties, you can easily replace that with the nemesis bracers to spawn elites out of the pylon. So you can farm death breaths as well. And then we're going to be using the Hunter's Wrath Belt. So our primary skills attack 30% faster and deal up to 200% more damage. This is key because Hungering Arrow is a primary skill. And that is what also is going to be getting the 15,000% increased damage. So it's just going to help us one-shot everything. And then for our... We're going to go with the Satchel here first, or our offhand. We're going to use the ninth Series Satchel. So Hungering Arrow deals up to 600% more damage and it can pierce... And then we are also going to be using Yang's Recurve because it is going to give us resource cost reduction as well as multi-shot attacks 50% faster and its damage is increased as well. So this is just key for the resource cost to let us spin indefinitely and just fly through the map. Just realized I missed covering the rings, so we're going to use Focus <coughs> excuse me, and Restraint. So when we hit with the resource generating attack, we deal 50% increased damage. And when we hit with the resource spending attack, we're going to deal 50% increased damage. So basically, while we're going through and using our hungry arrow and strafing, we're just going to have pretty much a constant 100% buff to our damage. For the cube, uh, so in the cube and our weapon, we're going to be using Dawn to reduce the cooldown of Vengeance by 65%. So that's going to help us be a DPS machine more often. We're going to be also using Depth Diggers to increase the primary skill damage by up to 100%. Or sorry, just 100% because it's in the cube, it's always max. So that again is going to affect our Hungry Arrow and let us destroy absolutely everything. And then for a little bit of survivability, we're going to be using the Elusive Ring. So after casting Shadow Power, Smoke Screen, or Vault, we take 60% AD. For our Legendary Gems, we're going to be using Tagux. So we're going to gain a damage increase based on the rank and this is going to stack for every time we spend resource on a channel skill straight to the channel skill so we're going to be doing that stacks up to 10 times and then we get two percent increased armor for every stack after rank 25 on the gem we're also going to be using bane of the powerful to get the 20 percent increased damage for a certain duration depending on the rank after killing an elite pack and then also at rank 25 we get 15 percent increased damage versus elites and take 15 percent less damage from elites. So we're using this over Stricken uh, because we're going to be 
destroying everything anyways like so quickly we're just going to keep that power buff you can swap this out for simplicity strength i just prefer this one uh as i go through as it's uh just the buff lasts forever because we are always going to run into elites and we're just going to constantly get that extra buff and then lastly we're going to be of course using bane of the trap so increased damage against enemies under the effects of control impairing effects so this is if they're slowed and whatever we get a certain damage increase and at rank 25 the gem there gives us that benefit so it reduces the movement speed of enemies within 15 yards by 30 percent thus proccing its bonus damage for our regular gems we're using diamonds in all our armor so for the resist all in the pants and chest and then for the cooldown in our helm and then we're using the emerald in our weapon for the increased critical hit damage for our skills, so we're going to be using Vengeance with Darkheart to turn us into a DPS machine. We're going to use Preparation with Punishment to restore our hatred as we use it. Uh, it'll help give us that quick re replenishment. Using Strafe with Rocket Storm, so they're shooting rockets at people while we strafe. Smoke Screens, so this is, uh, we vanish from sight for a limited time, but mainly this is going to be a, an additional movement speed to help us just fly quicker through uh, the axe then we're of course have hungering arrows this is our primary skill that's going to do all the damage and give us the momentum stacks and we're using that with the puncturing arrow and then lastly we're using bat uh, so this also gives us hatred as well just to keep that cost up and for our passives we're using tactical advantage so whenever we use vault shower power or smoke screen uh, we gain 60 percent movement speed for two seconds we have Tull of the Weak to deal more damage against slowed or chilled enemies. So our Bane of the Trap is going to give us that as well. And then Thrill the Hunt, enemies hit by our Hatred Spenders are slowed. So this is if we get outside of the range. We're also going to have the benefit of this, giving us some more damage. And then we're just rocking a second life here just in case we, you know, accidentally stand on something. Shouldn't really be a problem. We could swap that out for another talent as well. So we could also take... Or we could either take archery for some increased damage and or even uh, steady aim would also help as well because sometimes we're going to just fly past things and just get a better range of the 10 yards giving us damage increase as well. So there's a few options there if you don't want to rock the second life because if you're doing a solo you'll have a second life from your follower and if you're in a group you may want to keep it but ultimately we should be kind of survivable as is so that's just a kind of a fail safe just to prevent it because sometimes you know you do get caught and bad things happen and you, and you might need it so what i like to do just to kind of show how quick it is i like to go to siege breaker because it's one of the longest ones and so basically why this build is so good I'm just, so what we're going to do also is you want to get up to your 20 stacks of momentum whenever you step in and then we're just going to start strafing and every few seconds we're going to shoot another Iron arrow to keep the proc, but basically we're just going to fly through this with the free speed. Everything's just kind of melting, and we're just flying, flying, just to get to the end, just to show. This is why this build is so great at farming bounties, is because it is unbelievably quick, and also, like, everything is just dying. Death, 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 plus speed equals a perfect bounty farming build. This one in one of the more wheelchair class builds would take a while to get to the end, but we're already here. So this brings us to the end of the video. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. I will do my best to answer them. Also be doing a couple videos on other bounty builds as well for some other classes. Because of course, if you're not playing the class, it's hard to get like those primals or ancient drops that we're looking for. Um, so I'll do a couple builds for that as well. But anyways, if you have any questions, please let me know below. I'll do my best to answer them. As always, we appreciate like, share, and subscribe. So please click those buttons. As always, don't forget to keep coming back. We're going to be doing a lot more videos here for Season 26. So be sure to come back and check those out. That's all for now. Hope you're enjoying Diablo 3 Season 26. And we'll see you in the next video.